Hey guys, so this is gonna be part of a new series that I'm doing where I'm gonna be answering your guys' questions. And so what I'm gonna do is just take a question that I've already gotten, and I'm gonna address that question today. And what I want you guys to do, if you have any questions related to development, it can be programming specific, it can be career advice, it can be anything, as long as it is relevant to you know software development in general, I will pick one every single week and I will answer it and release the video every single Tuesday. So that is the new series. So let's go ahead and get started with today's question. So today's question is, hey, can you do some tutorials on to-do list with more functionality, like editing it, pagination, searching for to-dos? So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna take a to-do tutorial that I've already done that was in vanilla JavaScript. We're gonna take that code, we're gonna look at the code, and I'm gonna show you guys how I would go about adding searching functionality to that. So let's go ahead and open up my code editor, code editor. Now again, this is not going to necessarily be a tutorial. This is a question and answer series, so I'm gonna be answering it, but you can follow along with your own code if you'd like. So I'm gonna include the code for this and also a link to that tutorial in the description below. So you'll see a link to this tutorial and also the um, the code for the end result of this tutorial in the description. That way, if you do wanna follow along, you can. Otherwise, you can just watch and see how I would go about this and you can just have the knowledge. So here we are basically, we have a fully functioning to-do app. You can enter in to-dos. I'll just say like, you know, um, do another tutorial. You can see I submit it, you know, you got a list of to-dos and what they wanna do, what our question asks is how can we search through this? So let's just say we have thousands of to-dos for some reason and we wanna have a search bar up here. How can we put a search bar up here and then search for certain to-dos? That is what we're gonna do right now. So. I, the first thing that I'm gonna do is open up my HTML and I'm gonna throw in an input in here. You know, something, I'm gonna make this bigger. Okay, so let's look here. I want this to be at the top, so I'm gonna throw it at the top of this div here. Throw in an input and I'll give it an ID so we can access it easily and I'll just say search input and then type equals text. And then I'll give it, I guess an on change event um, or actually no I'll do the on change event inside of the JavaScript that way I can just keep everything nice and clean in here it just looks nicer so uh, let me give it a placeholder placeholder uh, we'll say search <laughs> uh, capital S search save let me see um, when I refresh this we have a little search bar it's not super pretty but I'll add some CSS in the end just because of OCD and I want it to look good so my thought process is the very first thing that I wanna do is be able to make sure that I have an event. So whenever I type inside of this um, the search bar here, we actually have access to this value here and we can use that string inside of our code. So in order to do that, so I've already got my, um, my search input here, um, put in the DOM and I just copied the ID so we can access it inside of here. And then what I wanna do is whenever, so I'm gonna just throw this here. Um, I'm gonna put this directly above my init click listeners and I'm gonna put a function called init search listener and I'll create that function right here, const init search listener. And all that's gonna do is say document.getElementById. I've already got the ID copied, so I'll paste it in, add event listener the event listener that I want is a key up event. So every time we lift our finger off the key, we are gonna fire this function. Um, and it passes the event automatically. And I think um, by convention in this file, I'm just saying dollar sign event. We don't have to do that. You can just use E, but for now, just to follow the pattern, I'm just gonna continue using that. And for now, I just want to console.log event.target.value just to make sure that it is hooked up the way that I would expect it to be. So I'll save it, refresh. I'll just type in spaghetti and you can see that it is, we have access to that string now. So now that we have access to that string, my thought process is okay. So this is a list of to-dos. I wanna see what this list of to-dos looks like because what we're gonna do is I'm, I wanna filter this with whatever I'm typing in here. So in other words, if I type in spaghetti, I wanna filter through this and only list the to-dos that have the word spaghetti inside of it. But in order to do that, I need to know what this list of to-dos, this object structure looks like. So I want to go ahead and actually log that out and see what it looks like. So the easiest way for me to do that would just be, instead of logging this, I'll log the um, list of to-dos. 
So I think I have a function called get to do's. Yep. So I'll just save. And whenever I type a letter inside of here, it's going to log the to do's. And it's super easy. It is just literally a string array. So it's an array of strings. So it's going to make this very easy for me to do the filtering. So I think what I would do here is just have a function that's like, you know, search to do's um, or filter to do's or something like that. We'll say filter to do's and it will take a string, um, you know, like a filter string, search string might be a better way to put it, search string. And it's going to get the to do's. Um, so actually I'm do a multi-line function here and I'm going to say uh, console.log. Oh goodness console.log, let me move my keyboard so I can actually see it, um, console.log get to do's, and I want to filter it, so I'm going to use the filter function in JavaScript. If you don't know how, to, how that works, please look in the description, I'll provide a link to a video tutorial on how filter works. And then we're going to say for each to do, we want the um, all the to do's where to do dot includes, uh, whoops, to do dot includes our little search string here. So I'll save that and then whenever we type I'm going to just run that function and we'll say what was it called again it was a uh, filter to do's we'll call filter to do's and I'm going to pass in the event dot target dot value save it and let's see what happens um, oh yeah let me refresh so I'm gonna use make here because there's two to do's with the word make in it so I feel like it's a good one to use and I type in make and you can see here is all of the to do's with the word make in it so I know that the filter function is working what I need to do is actually update this list now so the easiest way to refresh the list of to do's is probably to use this already pre-existing function here called display to do's and so whenever I filter the filter the to do's I want to call display to do's, but here's the thing. I want to call display to do's a little differently. And the reason why is because this is calling get to do's. And we specifically have a different array now that we're dealing with. Get to do's is all of the to do's. We want to use these new filtered to do's. So I'm actually going to put here, I'm going to create a const here called uh, const, um, you know, filtered is equal to that. And then I'm going to copy the contents of this function and I'm going to paste it underneath. And instead of get to do's, I'm going to use filtered. And I don't think we're going to need this because that clear input is for the actual to do input. So that's for this. We're not going to be worried about that in, the, in this function. Uh, we do want to clear the to do list display, correct? We don't really want to, we do want to init search listener. No, we don't want to do that again because there's only one ever. So we don't have to worry about doing that multiple times. And init click listeners, um, we don't want to do that again because I don't think we want to do that again. I We do want to do that again. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I, hold off on that one. I don't know if we're going to want to do that again or not because I'm not. It's been a while since I've looked at this source code, but I'm going to save it and let's just see what happens. Let's just see what happens get crazy all right it says uh uncaught type error cannot read property for each of undefined and that is on line 41 so let's see why that's happening line 41 filter dot for each um filtered appears to be an empty array for some reason is that what's going on here this uh console dot log i'm gonna just log that save it refresh i'll type in make and it's definitely undefined. Now, where are we logging this? That's line 10. Oops, line 10. I must be, ah, that's what it is. I need to return, not log. Return, that would help a lot, wouldn't it? So I'll actually make this a single line function here by doing that, and then I'll save it, and let's see what happens now. When I refresh, type in make. That worked, that's pretty cool. But here's the problem. When I backspace out, Oh, hey, it works great. That's amazing. Okay, so here's actually another problem. Lowercase letters. Okay, well, the reason why that didn't work is because these right here use a capital M, and we want it to be completely ignorant of that. It shouldn't matter if it's uppercase or lowercase. It should know what we're talking about, right? So what I'm going to do is inside of my filter function, I'm going to say to do dot to lowercase case. 
And then also I want to not only do two lowercase here, but I also want to lowercase our search string so that everything is lowercase and we don't have to worry about case whatsoever. And then I'm gonna refresh and I'm gonna type it in lowercase here. We get that and I'm gonna type it all in capital letters. We still get it. And we have the ability to search. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna quickly um, give this the same sort of style as this. And I think in here, I must be using bootstrap. Yep, so I'm gonna give that input a class. Let's just, uh, just throw that right there. That might do it. Let me refresh, boom. Um, you know, actually I feel like that should be below the header. <laughs> it just doesn't look right. Let's throw it here. See if that looks a little better. Yeah, but let's give it a little bit of a padding. I'm gonna um, grab this ID, go into my CSS file here. I'm uh, not padding, um, margin. Give it like a margin bottom of like, uh, I don't know, 15 pixels. Save it, refresh. That is spectacular. So when I type in spaghetti, we can see all the to-dos related to spaghetti. So that works great. So I hope that answers your question. And I, um, I actually enjoyed making this video. It's kind of fun. And I'll provide the source code to the finished version of this along with the original version of this and a link to the tutorial that this uh, is based off of along with the link to the filter tutorial all in the description. And if you want to ask any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Give me a like if you haven't already. Subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.